Well, hello, this is uh, Eric Orr from Wildlife Biologist with the New Hampshire Fish and Wildlife. Well, today I'm standing on the banks of the Merrimack River here in Concord, New Hampshire, and uh, my mind travels back some four decades to the very first moose, to my knowledge, that was ever tranquilized in New Hampshire that I was a part of, so about 1980. Uh, so, Fishing Game had our headquarters uh, in the, uh, right behind me here or behind the camera, the old Bridge Street uh, headquarters and uh, uh, on the banks of the Merrimack River. Well, back then, moose were quite rare in central and southern New Hampshire. It was a rare thing to see a moose or to hear about one. In fact, uh, you could almost track it from town to town. Say, uh, you know, if it was seen in Bosquin, you'd get a report, then it might be seen, and maybe loud, and you'd get a report, and try to so you could almost track an individual moose by, for several weeks by reports. Well, this spring day in 1980, a moose showed up right here in Concord, almost downtown Concord, right next to I-93 and Bridge Street, with a lot of traffic, and, you know, say, moose were very scarce then, so there was concern that this moose would, would uh, get hit by a car or injure somebody, so the decision was made that fine day to try to capture and, and relocate this moose. So I was tasked with this job with my supervisor, Henry Laramie, at Fish and Game. He'd been there many years and I uh, you know, was the new black bear biologist from October of 78 and had some experience tranquilizing bears. So uh, we set forth to try to tranquilize uh, this moose. So we, Tracked the moose and ended up on the other. It was on the other side of the river, in a parking lot of what then was J.C. Penney's, I think. Now it's the Lowe's uh, store. Uh, so we found the moose in the parking lot there and approached it with our tranquilizer gun. But the moose was too skittish and ran off into the woods towards the river, and kind of disappeared for a while. And Henry and I looked for it. Well, I had the bright idea of well, maybe I'll go down back to headquarters, a short distance away, and uh, borrow a boat from the fisheries division where I'd worked uh, previously, and which I did, and I launched the boat right behind the camera here, maybe 100 yards away at the Everett Arena, and putted up the river with my loaded tranquilizer gun. And as I rounded the corner right up there that you can see, I rounded that corner, and there stood the moose on the edge of the river, which was actually on the edge of an island. So I fired the dart into the butt of the moose and waited. And it takes 10 or 15 minutes for a moose to go down when you tranquilize them. Uh, and uh, so I waited and waited, and actually the moose ended up going down in like a, a back eddy into the island, and maybe a foot of water or more. Well, I was very concerned that the moose might drown if it went down in the, in the, in the body of water, so I got out of the boat and went up there and kind of braced the moose. And in the meantime, I had uh, Walt Stevens, I think, was in the boat with me, and Murray Fay was another bio aide, had been along, and uh, he was behind the store at the time, and he actually swam or waded out to the island to give us a hand. So the moose finally went out, and we were able to rock the boat up on its side and roll the moose into it and tip it back up, and we had the moose. So I you know, had some ropes, and I tied the legs up so I couldn't run away, and uh, I came uh, motoring down, easily down the, the river to the boat ramp right here, and uh, uh, we had the fishing game videographer actually took pictures of it. Wayne, Wayne something, I can't remember his last name right now. And uh, we loaded the, the boat and moose them all onto the trailer, the, the boat trailer, tagged the moose and got over onto the highway and headed up the highway. Went up to exit, uh, I think it's exit 17, the, uh, the Canterbury Bosman exit. Got off there and went up Route 4. Uh, headed off towards Mount Kearsarge. Uh, maybe, you know, half an hour of our 15 minutes out that way. And we did, you know, went to a, it was a big wetland and open fields, and I thought very good moose habitat. So we were able to uh, kind of tip the boat up again, unload the moose and watch it. And back then we didn't have the, the, uh, the antagonist. So we couldn't wake the moose up like there are tranquilizing equipment today. So we had to wait another half an hour or more hour till, till she finally got her legs. And, uh, and walked away. So we had this tag moose. Mount Kirasaj was right up to my, you know, to the south, and away she went. 
Well, you know, in the next spring, uh, we got reports of a cow moose with tags by Mount Kearsarge that had a calf. So the first ever translocation of a moose in New Hampshire that I was involved with, the first that I know of, we were successfully in capturing the moose here in Concord, trans translocating it to Bosquin, where it, it survived and actually produced a calf the next spring. So, uh, very, um, uh, so 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago, I was involved with capturing the first moose in New Hampshire with a successful relocation.